Hey, what's up, guys? Kenneth here, and welcome to a new video. Today, I have all four new smartphones from Opera. Just in case you're wondering what brand is that, I'm going to tell you. If you're familiar with the internet browser called Opera Mini, and also these apps, Olist, Ope, Oride Driver, they are the brand behind the Ola smartphones. Aside from the fact that it's a new brand, these phones are good entry level smartphones. And the amazing part is that they fit right into the mid range market. Not only budget friendly, they also have trendy features and the design is not bad for starters. I have the M1 Lite, M8 Plus, V9 Pro, and the Note 3. Yeah, I know someone is probably thinking, where is M2 or M7 to the M8? Yes, of course, there's M6, but it couldn't find its way down here fast. But if you'd ask me, I think the brand is not mistaken. Probably trying to fit in and make a good competition and also to announce its presence. Not bad at all. In this video is my ultimate review and comparison of all four of them, so you know what the Ola smartphones are all about. So before I get on with the video, please subscribe to my channel. I believe it's a way of supporting and encouraging this channel to do better. It's absolutely free. Be kind enough, click the subscribe button while watching this video. Don't forget the bell icon for quality updates and post notifications from this channel. The Ola smartphones are designed to stand unique in today's mobile market. And they are not starting from a poor perspective. It's a simple build and price worthy smartphone. Starting with the Ola M8 Plus, the design is no different from most budget smartphones. It is built entirely out of plastic. Announced and released in the month of February 2020. The design is not premium, but the finish is irresistible. It weighs 153 grams, relatively light in the hand. It is a dual camera build on its tray with a single LED flash. A fingerprint scanner and the Ola branding. At the bottom is a microphone and a mono speaker. Then at the top of the phone is a 3.5 mm audio jack and a micro USB charging port. Nothing on the left side. On the right side is the power button and the volume rocker. The Ola M8 Plus is valued at 23,000 naira or $63. My color variant is red. Next is the Ola M1 Lite. This one is the first generation entry level smartphone from Ola. It is also plastic build and plastic finish. Announced and released on February 2020. This phone weighs 121 grams. It is also a dual camera setup on the rear with a single LED flashlight, an over shaped fingerprint scanner, and the Opel logo branding. On the right side is a power button and a volume rocker. At the bottom is a double firing speaker, a microphone, and a USB charging port. And the top is a 3.5 mm audio jack. My color option is the champagne gold. And the available price is $21,000 or $60. Moving on to the third one is the Ola V9 Pro. This one falls under the budget category. It is plastic built on the back and a glass front. It has a smooth panel where you find a triple camera and a single LED flash. A fingerprint scanner with some warm tips and instructions and the Ola branding. At the bottom is a single firing speaker, a noise counseling mic and a USB Type-C charging port. On the right side is the volume rocker and the power button. And at the top is a proximity sensor. It weighs 176 grams and my color option is called Vacation Blue. Announced February and also released February 2020. It has an ultra budget price of 32,000 Naira. For me, that's the best budget price ever for a smartphone. At $90, this phone is definitely a go-getter. And then the last one is the Ola Note 3. This one falls in the mid-range category with a variety of decent features and capabilities. The design looks premium and very beautiful. It is a premium plastic build that feels like glass with a metal frame finish. The Note 3 is a shiny device that reflects and changes color when light hits it. It feels like the design of the Ola Note 3 was inspired by the Oppo F11 Pro because of the similar layout on the rear. A dual camera with a single LED flashlight and a capacitive fingerprint scanner with the Ola signature in a purple gradient as one of its colors. Another trendy feature of the Note 3 is the motorized pop-up camera which I'll talk more about soon in this video. On the left side is the dual nano SIM slot, and on the right side is the power button and the volume rocker. At the bottom is a double firing speaker and a Type-C USB for charging and connectivity. Also announced and released February 2020. It weighs 202 grams and available in Nigeria for 57,000 Naira or $154. Now let's talk about the display. The M1 Lite has a 5.7 inch IPS LCD panel. It is a water drop notch display with a resolution of 720 by 1600 pixels, 19 is to 9 aspect ratio. The M8 Plus has 6.0 inch IPS LCD panel. It has no notch, 18 is to 9 aspect ratio with a resolution of 720 by 1440 pixels. 
The V9 Pro is a 6.5 inch IPS LCD panel with an aspect ratio of 20 to 9. There is a punch hole cutout for its selfie camera and a resolution of 720 by 1600 pixels. The No3 features a 6.5 inch IPS LCD panel, 720 by 1600p resolution, 20 to 9 aspect ratio. The display is void of any cutouts or notch. On the M8 Plus, there is a slim bezel on top that gives way to the front camera and other sensors. The V9 Pro is also a full view display. The camera cutout is almost non noticeable. It has thin bezels, unlike the water drop M1 light. The bezels are noticeable. They all have good viewing angles. Color reproduction is good, and watching YouTube videos is at 720p and 1080p. These phones are good media content consumer. Moving on to the camera side, the M1 light is a dual camera build of 8 megapixel. The M8 Plus is also a dual ray camera setup of 8 megapixel and 0.3 megapixel. The V9 Pro is a triple camera combination of 13 megapixel plus 0.3 megapixel and another 0.3 megapixel. The Note 3 has a 16 megapixel and additional 2 megapixel secondary, making it a dual camera combination. These are sample photos from each of them. When it comes to video shooting, the M1 Lite shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second. The M8 Plus shoots 720p at 30 frames per second. The V9 Pro shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second and the Note 3 shoots 1080p at 30 frames per second. The pop-up camera of the Note 3 is a 16 megapixel camera. The V9 Pro has a punch hole 5 megapixel front camera. The M8 Plus is also 5 megapixel selfie and the M1 Lite boosts 8 megapixel front selfie. What do you think of the picture quality from the rear cameras, the front facing camera and the video recording? Please drop your comments below and let's talk about it. In the performance side, the M1 Lite is a MediaTek MT6761 Helio A22 chip, quad core processor of 1.3 GHz, 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB internal storage and expandable up to 32 GB with micro SD card, Android 9 Pi powered by 3000 mAh battery capacity. The M8 Plus is a Helio A22 chip. A quad core processor of 1.3 GHz, 2 GB of RAM, 16 GB internal storage, and also expandable up to 64 GB with micro SD, and a 9 Pi with 2800 mAh battery. The V9 Pro is a 64 bit 2.0 GHz octa core processor, Helio A22 chipset, 3 GB of RAM, 32 GB internal storage, and a 9 Pi and 3900 mAh battery power. The Note 3 is also a 64 bit 2.0 GHz octa core processor, P23 system on chip, 4 GB of RAM. 64 gig internal storage capacity with a 3300 million battery available. PowerVR G8320 is the graphics chip available on the M1 Lite and the M8 Plus. Amale G71 MP2 is available on the Note 3 and the V9 Pro. But considering the RAM size on the M1 Lite and the Ola M8 Plus, heavy gaming won't be a success. But the V9 Pro and the Note 3 are relatively smooth for gaming. Launching the Opera Mini application on these devices. The Y9 Pro is swift enough, followed by the Note 3. The M8 Plus and the M1 Lite comes later. Next is the YouTube application. The V9 Pro goes all the way. The Note 3 comes second, M8 Plus in third place, and M1 Lite shows up later. So before I sign out, I'd like to share my honest thoughts, the things I love about these devices and as well as the downsides, so to help someone make a good purchase decision. I like the fact that they run on the latest Android 9.0 Pi. Not bad for starters. Helio A22 and P23 system on chip is a good entry level processor, but the downsides are the battery capacity available. 2800 mAh to 3900 mAh battery. It's not a total letdown. Surprisingly, their battery life are reliable. It can take you almost a full day. It's not a fast charge support. It takes almost 2 hours to 100% fully charged. Hopefully, we'll get to see an AMOLED display soon from Ola. I commend the brand for starting out with the motorized pop-up camera on the Note 3, which is also trendy. The V9 Pro, M8 Plus, and the M1 Lite are ideal. They are capable of performing fast and not power intensive. The Ola smartphones are budget friendly and does not break your wallet. If you like this video, please make it viral. Share it to a friend to help make a good purchase decision. And before you go, please hit on the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.